Welcome back. Outstanding public higher education debt surged more than 85 percent between 2007 and 2017. That outpaced all other major muni bond credit as colleges and universities used it to fund improvements like campus expansions. But with college matriculation now on the decline over the past few years and expected to be compounded by the pandemic, my next guest says that debt is growing more and more risky by the day. For more, let's bring in Tom McLaughlin. He's head of America's Fixed Income for UBS Financial Services. Tom, it's good to have you. Before we dive into this, how many investors might be exposed to this risk without realizing it? Well, right now, Kelly, the... Um Higher education constitutes about seven or eight, seven or eight percent of the entire municipal market, so there is a fair amount of bonds out there, and unfortunately, there's an expectation among some investors that the colleges and universities and mass are very safe investments, and some are. But there are others that are going to have real problems in the uh, in the years ahead. Yeah, it reminds me of the way that college towns and university towns had been perceived as better. Uh, kind of better ratings um, because they had the stability, they had the steady employment, they had it through the last recession. Now they're facing a deep recession of their own. Who's hardest hit? Who's most at risk? Well, I think uh, the winners, you're going to have winners and losers here. And uh, the winners are going to be the schools with the national reputation, which will allow them to draw students from a wider geographic base. Uh, and that's particularly true for schools in the Northeast and the Midwest. Um, those with ample endowments, um, you know, financial reserves are going to be okay. And if you've got a really ideal physical location, uh, you're probably going to be fine too. But, but actually, preferably, you need two of those three characteristics to prosper over the course of the next decade or so. The demographics are actually working against small liberal arts colleges who, from 1996 to, say, 2016 or 17, had the advantage of the baby boom shadow coming through. Right. Where so, you had so many more students coming in and applying to college. How many of those small liberal arts colleges might have to close? Or to put it in, in kind of terms for your investors, how many might not be able to service their debt? Well, right now there are about 1,400 uh, four-year colleges out there in America. Um, and there's probably another two or 3,000 that are offering community colleges, two-year degrees, et cetera. Among those small 1,400 schools, we haven't picked, that, picked an actual number, but there's a couple of hundred out there that are just basically suffering from this twin whammy, if you will, of unfavorable demographics and an embedded cost structure, whether it be capital infrastructure that you mentioned before that they've put in over the course of the last 20 years that they're still, still supporting, or you've got uh, tenured faculty that effectively constitutes an embedded cost. So uh, what we're recommending is that for investors who are moderately conservative, you really want to stick with flagship co uh, campuses of big public universities or highly selective private colleges that are likely to ride out the pandemic and the aftermath of that. Yeah, still, uh, that's pretty stark that a couple hundred colleges could have trouble paying these bills. There's another category that you also warn investors about as being pretty risky, and it's those bonds that are secured by narrow revenue pledges like privatized student housing. Can you explain that? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I should qualify uh, the couple hundred. You know, there will be a couple hundred, as you say, colleges that are going to have trouble. It doesn't mean they're all going to default, and that's an important concept. We have to make sure that we tell people. It's not like you're going to see 200 you know, roll over, mm. but there will be a few that will, and, they, and you will have a couple hundred that are going through some very difficult times. In terms of those with limited security pledges, the ones that are really at risk right now are those uh, pardon me, auxiliary revenue bonds that are backed by things like student fees, or intercollegiate sports revenue, revenue derived from arenas, things like that. And one other sector that's really having some problems in the last six months are privatized student housing sector. Mm. These are bonds that are basically secured by individual rents on uh, kind of private, privately managed dormitories that may or may not be on the campus of the, of the school. And as a consequence of COVID, of course, with so many uh, students basically being remote, there's much less demand for those particular types of dormitories. Yeah, and I can imagine that this also affects uh, the municipal investments for the communities at large. Uh, in just a word, would you warn investors away from those too? No, not yet. I mean, I think at this point, what we're seeing is um, in, the, in, the, in the broader context, obviously state governments are having their own financial stress, and that's likely to continue for a couple of years. They will probably re reduce aid to local governments. Yeah. We always have this saying that credit risk flows downhill. So as states cut back aid to local governments, you may see some of those smaller towns have some difficulty as well. Yeah. Uh, it's really important to basically go with those 
particular uh, issuers in the municipal market, whether it be colleges or whether it be municipalities that have accumulated reserves when the times were good. Tom, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks for bringing this to our forefront. My pleasure. Tom McLaughlin of UBS Financial Services. And before we go, take a quick look at shares of Disney. The stock is jumping midday as longtime activist investor Daniel Loeb says he took a new position in the stock during the second quarter. Loeb is the manager of Third Point. He initiated the long position when the stock, st stock sank, he said, as investors began to worry about theme park and movie theater closures. He says those concerns mask a compelling opportunity, including streaming. He told our Scott Wapner there isn't a close number two rival to Disney. The shares are up about 2%. And that does it for the exchange. In the next hour, what do HSBC, Chipotle, Home Depot, and Delta have in common? We'll tell you. Stay with us. When the market is unpredictable, BAM gives you certainty. In the face of market volatility and illiquidity, BAM insured municipal bonds deliver default protection, value preservation, and a durable AA rating from S&P. BAM's insurance protects against everything that causes a default, including natural disasters, financial fraud, pension issues, and economic disruption. So while America rebuilds, BAM has you covered. BAM. Build America Mutual. Talk to your investment advisor or visit buildamerica.com.